Hey guys, we've made it to chapter six. We get a new topic now. This is going to be structures. So we're gonna do some cool things here. We're gonna be talking about trusses. Uh, some of these will look very familiar to you if you've ever driven over uh, a bridge over a large river. So if you've been over the Mississippi River, for example, you've seen a truss. Um, we're also gonna talk about frames and machines after we talk about the trusses. All right, so let's first go over what exactly is an engineering structure. Essentially what it is, it's just going to be a connected system of members that are built to support or transfer loads. Right, so that's all it is. And the key thing here is it's got to be able to withstand the loads that are applied to it. Right, so you don't want it to fail and then have your structure break down. Now first, let's talk about a truss. A truss, what that is, that's just gonna be uh, members that are joined at their ends to form a rigid structure. And when we say rigid, we mean it's not gonna collapse and it's going to have negligible deformation. So it's rigid, it's gonna be fixed in place, it's not going to change shapes, nothing like that. All right, so it's gonna hold uh, the form that you put it in. Now triangles are going to be the basic elements of trusses. So if you've ever been over a bridge, for example, you've probably seen something that looks like that. That is a truss. So notice it's got the three triangles here. Triangles are our basic elements of trusses. And that's because the way the forces work out, they make up a good shape to use for these types of structures. Now, all of these truss members are going to be two force members. And remember what a two force member is. It's just a member in equilibrium under the action of two forces only. And our forces are gonna act in tension or compression. All right, so if we draw a picture here, let's just say we're gonna draw one of these. All right, so let's say it looks like that. When we say it's a two force member, we're gonna have forces like this. Okay, so in this case, they're same magnitude at this point, and they're gonna be opposite direction. This would be tension, and that's because these are pulling away. So the member itself is being pulled in different directions, so that's in tension. All right, now the other one would be if we have two forces pointing inward. So this is, let's call this B and this A, and we'll call this B and this A. So here we've got the force and the forces are pushing inward on that member. This is going to be compression. Okay, so now we got compression. Now these forces that we've got, notice they're along the same line here. These are going to be equal magnitude. They're opposite in direction and they are collinear. So they lie on the same line here. That's what we mean by two force member. Now, a lot of students wanna just look at points A and B when they think about tension or compression, you're not looking at the point, you're looking at this whole member. Okay, so not just the individual point. You gotta figure out if the whole member is put under tension or if it's under compression. All right. Now our equations. Our equations we're gonna use here are pretty simple. For equilibrium, you guys can probably guess, we're gonna have the sum of the forces equal zero and some of the moments will be zero. All right. And then another thing we need to think about is Newton's third law. Okay, this isn't necessarily for equilibrium, it's just for these problems in general. Let's review Newton's third law. Remember for this one, it stated that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Let's 
So we're going to keep this in mind as we go through these problems. Now look at these two things. If you think about it, Newton's third law here, we're going to have that in place. So look at this. These are equal but opposite in direction, right? So we can say that FA is equal to negative FB. So just keep this in mind. We're going to revisit this when we go through our trusses. All right, so let's talk about the first method we're going to look at. We're going to use two different methods to solve these truss problems. And the first one is going to be the method of joints. Now, this method is really simple to do, but it can be kind of long and tedious. Morning and now. So these problems can be kind of lengthy, but they're not really hard to do. They just have a lot of little pieces to them. So first let's talk about what a joint is. A joint is going to be where our members come together. So if I have something that looks like this, let's look at this piece right here. So if you look, I've got four members right here. They're all coming together at this one point. That would be a joint. Now, in order for the whole truss to be in equilibrium, equilibrium has to be satisfied at each of the joints. So it's called the method of joints because we're going to analyze all of the joints of the truss. And you'll see when we get to the example. Okay, so again, this method is really simple. It's not very hard to do. It's just kind of long and tedious. So let's stop this video here. We'll pick up in the next one with the example that you see right here.